Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily inspirational chat. Uh, this is episode number 664 and the topic today is um, it's time to respect women. Let's get real and uh, raising the bar. That was the other part. Right? It was a three part title. Um, before I jump in, let me introduce myself and then we'll get right into this. First of all, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, excuse me, best selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what inspires my work and inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring the Feminine Heart. And so today I'm up to episode number 664. These are every day. And this is my daily chat on Facebook Live. So in case you're watching on YouTube, it started on Facebook Live and you can watch me live there. I'll give you the links at the back end. And the topic today is part of a through line of conversations because I've done two talks now about women in leadership. I did one on, what's today? Today is Wednesday. So I did one yesterday, Tuesday. There was one on Sunday as well. Okay, just getting my calendar right. So today is like a a next level of that, which I'm raising the bar, so to speak, which is let it's time to respect women. And I mean this in more than one way. So it's not just like, just go respect women. It's easy. It's like, no, it's more than that. Because the reality is, it's not just men need to learn how to respect women. It's women need to respect each other. So I'm going to break this down in a couple of ways and speak to this from the point of view of a holistic and a societal change. I'll put it that way, but I'll I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it personal too, (laughs) to say the least. On one level, I've talked about, I've talked about this yesterday. We're, we're about due for a big cultural shift. And we're talking about women in leadership, women raising the bar and also women stepping into the forefront because it's time for that to happen on a much bigger scale than it's done before. I talked yesterday also about the sexual revolution, also about women's right to vote, all these different things that have culturally come along. At the same time, in this patriarchal arena we play in, there's still an attachment and also an, an, un, uh, say an unconscious I don't know, mindset, belief system, structure in play that perpetuates the sense that women are not respected the way things are still said and done. In fact, um, and I haven't watched the show, so my apologies if you haven't. There's a show called This Is Us, and I know a lot of you watch it, especially the ladies. I was reading an actual, an article that was talking about the conversation between the the two, the husband and wife, um, Sterling K. Brown's husband, and I forget the name of the wife's character, uh, actress, but about the relationship they're going through, about how she's stepping forward and being raised in the bar for her own rights in the relationship but how they were defaulting back to the old paradigm where he was a patriarchal, where, where Sterling, K. Brown, Sterling K. Brown's character was, because of what it was written, was defaulting to normal behavior. And frankly, it was a great, from what I, and again, I have not seen the show, I was just reading the article, but the way it was written and the way they talked about it in the, um, I guess it was an interview that was done on stage and I, I was reading the, just the, the cliff notes of it how in fact they were watching the evolution of their both of their both their characters because they love each other so much that they weren't going to break up however because there'd be a right if that happened however they're going to have to evolve and grow to stay together and so that piece was a was a beautiful microcosm to understand how even in loving relationships the old paradigm still is pervasive and so men have without becoming consciously aware of this defaulted to no way of being where they play front and center and have the women step back and be secondary. This is part of the paradigm shift that I'm talking about, that we have an elevation coming, and it is coming, I believe, and a shift coming where we're actually going to create a new culture and it's going to be a conscious, intentional culture that we need to create. It won't happen on its own, but it's it's also going to happen regardless of what we try not to do. And the shift is basically bringing forward a feminine leadership, a feminine paradigm, a feminine-led culture, I'm going to repeat myself, that is what we need. We're in a place now where the patriarchal structure has proven that it has no longer got the teeth, the effects, or the power to get, get us where we want to go. I'm going to be blunt. I'm being blunt about that because it's true. And as a man speaking this, I know I'm being a traitor to my kind, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm being a lie to the truth. And I'm being very much in favor of supporting the women, which is why I do my work anyway. So the cultural shift we're having is requiring us to step forward in a new way. Ladies, 
um, it's time that you were uh, you were respected both by the men and by each other because uh, frankly there's still a dog eat de- dog eat dog mentality that women run as I mentioned yesterday and I've talked about it many times the business world is still created as a as a stu- structure by men for men and women have been trying to fit in so the mindset a lot of women carry is absolutely detrimental to the feminine leadership to each other because they're actually acting like men which is to be dog eat dog competitive combative I win you lose that's the way it works so women are still carrying that same belief structure because they've been trained to do it by the men or the society we live in so part of the shift that's coming along I mentioned this yesterday too is that there needs to be a shift into a collaborative cooperative and connected culture which is what the feminine brings and again I'm mentioning feminine in this sense because women generally align to the feminine men generally align to the masculine and we all carry both inside of us just to make sure I cover the gamut on this sense and so speaking from the point of view that most men can awaken to evolve into and own their masculine hearts because a lot of men don't that's part of the respect piece too and ladies growing out of the um which 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 which, um, <laughs> which archetype to use let's just say evolving from the way you are now to the feminine is a growth level for you as well and when men are only masculine and women are the feminine respect is, de- is the default because there's a reverence and because I, I remember this vividly myself when I went through this journey the shift inside of me was so um, I won't say pivotal but it was so clear from where I was to where I'd become because my sense I'd always loved women that wasn't that wasn't the issue it wasn't, it wasn't the challenge but to learn to respect women from a whole other level was a game changer for me that's what put me on this path to the work I do now but ladies what I'm very aware of and I see women when I see women own and embody their feminine it is absolutely gorgeous ravishing delightful amazing humbling and also there's kinship when women are in the feminine there's a sisterhood that is almost automatic because the feminine seeks the feminine to support each other it's natural and it's amazing and it's wonderful so respect is automatic feminine to feminine respect is automatic masculine to feminine and so when I'm talking about raising the bar and getting real is to say to you if you're not if you're a man and not in your masculine a woman not in your feminine if that's your if that's your natural alignment because some men are naturally feminine some women are naturally masculine so I'm speaking to the generality here just to be clear it's not it's not easy black and white there is some variance and I'm not speaking to other gender choices out there I'm speaking just to this framework because the one I know just to be transparent so when men own their masculine so stepping into your masculine hearts men and learning that being masculine is not the same as macho and I'll drop this in here now too because this bugs me as well I do not believe the term toxic masculinity is correct it's a mislabeled term because what I believe is masculinity doesn't get toxic machoism does so I firmly believe that it shouldn't be toxic masculinity it should be toxic machoism because masculine is a raised elevated state for men to own the place of authority of decisiveness of support of heart of direction of clarity of service macho not so much that's where the toxicity lies so that's part of the shift to move into respectful place and for ladies again when you own and claim your feminine and I don't just mean the goddess because the goddess works become very big for the last 12 15 years there's another level beyond that and for ladies who really claim that space of owning into leadership into the fierce queen priestess archetypes and, and I'm not going to go into depth in that but just that feeling if you get the sense of what I'm talking about is where the power lies for change for evolution and for bringing us all together in a much higher level of conversation this is one of a t- series of talks I'm giving now more and more it seems like because there's time to raise the bar and elevate the conversation because we are at, we are at a crossroads we're at a space now in this culture and watching what's happening in the politics in the country it's very clear we're at a crossroads because what we're seeing is in some ways the stranglehold of the old framework the old paradigm the toxic macho patriarchy perhaps I'm throwing that one out as an option that is no longer willing to move forward but I'm also seeing the free spirit and the energy of the feminine dynamic that is absolutely gung-ho to shift us into a much greater place and personally I prefer the latter 
and I'm watching politics around the world and seeing women not being the feminine, just to be clear about that too, but there's a missing piece, which is how do we participate in that? So I'm asking you, or I'm suggesting to you, and to myself, because I'm, I'm part of this conversation too, obviously, <laughs> is how do you express your natural alignment, masculine or feminine, depending on what your gender and your preference is. Again, masculine and feminine is a polarity, male and female is a gender. They're not necessarily the same, but they do, ten do tend to align. Where can you step up? Where can you raise your bar and hold a higher level of place to be so you respect yourself and you respect each other? Because the secret message in this thing, by the way, isn't about just respecting women. It's about respecting men in the masculine too. This is kind of taking the conversation beyond the Me Too conversation at this point because the thing is the Me Too conversation is still unfolding. It ain't done yet, I know. But there's an awakening that's coming forward. People are starting to wake up to another level of being where the Me Too becomes secondary. Not, as a, not to ignore it and not to deny it, please. But to make it clear that it won't happen again because that's no longer part of our culture, it's no longer part of our beingness, because who we are as conscious, caring individuals means that we don't do that anymore. Because respect is fundamental, and this is the thing. A lot of the Me Too stuff, where men against women, was extremely clear where respect was not even given, either way. So part of this shift to respect each other raises the conversation, raises our, our place of being, and raises the bar for where we want to play. This is big work, I know, and I'm not doing this alone. I cannot and will not do this alone. So I'm inviting you to join in the conversation. I'm inviting you to offer your suggestions and thoughts. Please put them below the broadcast if you wish. If you want to talk further, reach out to me on social media. This is a Facebook Live goes onto YouTube, so either platform works. Um, I'm taking this message out into the world. That's becoming clear. I've been talked about this recently. It's become very necessary to take this out of off, off the, just the screen into public places. So I'm putting it out now. If you're in, if you know anywhere this talk would come, would land, and you want to help bring me into it, speak to some people, let me know. And it's scaring me to say that. So just bear in mind, I didn't say that very clearly because I was like, oh, yee. I was a bit tongue tied saying it. But it's true for me now. And yes, I'm still coaching women who want to help heal the hearts, attract amazing relationships, because there are so many broken hearts that they're yet to heal. Um, and one of the things, I'm, sorry, I was, I was, just to be transparent, I was selfishly looking at how I can promote something in the broadcast. It's a bad habit, but I gotta do it. Um, I will put a link into my self-love practice in the comments, because the thing I'm really clear about is that one of the ways we get to respect each other is when we respect ourselves. And part of the fundamental part of respecting ourselves is learning to love ourselves. So the self-love practice I put in there is a piece of, I'll say a piece of art. <laughs> it's a written and audio guide to help you learn to love yourself more fully than you're already doing. So I'll put that in the comments as well. But the thing I wanna say is, as a fundamental bottom line is, where in your life can you be more respectful of yourself? Where in your life can you be more respectful of each other? And where in your life can, be, can you be respectful of everybody else? Now, as a PS to that, some people don't earn that respect. So I'm not saying you should respect, respect people blindly or respect without, um, I'll say due diligence. But be respectful of holding a higher watch for each other. That's what I want to say. If people grow and learn, this is wonderful. If they get stuck, maybe you want to help them up. Oh, that's that piece. Thank you. I knew it was a piece hanging at the back that wasn't coming through yet. Here's the thing. One of the ways that we excuse me, one of the ways that I <laughs> was doing, was practicing respect without even realizing it was through gentlemanly, gentlemanly behavior. And I'm using this term loosely. So, oh, hi Jessica, thanks for being here. So you're, you're glad I'm speaking to this from the male perspective. I, I have no choice. So I appreciate you saying that to me, thank you. And yes, this absolutely is having to be said. I mean, there are men out there working with other men, which is great. And there are men helping women in the dating arena, which is not my strength. My focus is in relationship-centric conversations, but also in this arena more and more is about respect. And also helping women lead more from the feminine because I see the, I see a vision maybe. I see a calling to shift the planet going forward into a much more feminine-led world that's gonna save our planet. So no small thing. <laughs> so yes, generally conduct, just remind me that, drop that seed as well. Men who are watching this, one way you can show respect is to be a gentleman. Opening the door for a woman is such a simple thing, 
but it's an indication of respect and appreciation, not denial of strength, not denial of independence, because some women go, don't open the door for me, I can handle it myself. It's about respect. And this is the thing about respect, is sometimes respect is not received. Don't let that deter you. When you're out in the world and you're showing respect to other people, they may or may not receive it. And the bottom line is it's nothing to do with them. It's absolutely everything to do with you. So I'm suggesting and encouraging you to show more respect to those around you, especially those that, are, uh, that, that, that deserve it and those that don't. Play with it, see what happens. Okay, I think I've exhausted this broadcast enough to give you that feedback. Um, I appreciate you being with me. As always, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do it on my own personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And this one is part of a new direction I see me going into, which is about feminine leadership and encouraging, supporting, and inspiring that. Because that's really where my heart lies, ultimately in relationships and beyond. So if you've got issues around relationship, let me know and I can help you with that. Again, I'll put a link in the comments for, this, for my self-love practice. And if you know where I can bring this talk into the world, just <laughs> taking a deep breath on that one, please let me know as well. Um, if you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. Again, questions, thoughts, ideas, please put them in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook Live. And uh, if you want to join me live tomorrow, I'll be here at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as usual. That's the plan. Sorry, I'm just pl I'm watching my day. Can we see where it goes? Um, and again, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow for number 668. I've lost track of the numbers. It's in the broadcast title. Um, appreciate you being with me. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. And again, respect yourself, respect each other. Let's change the world. Bye.